Okay, let's start. So we talked about rotations. Uh, in fact, 3D rotations last class, I showed you that uh, rotations do not commute. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is 3D angular velocity. So let's connect it with 2D first. In 2D, we saw that, so in 2D, we've always talked about uh, angular velocity being theta dot k, right, it's theta dot. So what that means is in 2D, we had x, y plane, and then we said that if something is rotating, uh, we showed theta and we said that the angular velocity is rate of change of theta, so theta dot. Now this theta is actually about the z-axis. So what was not shown is that there's actually a z-axis protruding out of the plane of paper. And the way you get the direction of z, why is it coming out of the plane, not in the plane, is if you take your right hand, you curl your uh, curl the fingers of your right hand from x to y, your, your, your thumb gives the direction of the z-axis. So x cross y is thumb is pointing outside. So that's the z. And in the real way, the right way to write angular velocity in 3D is to write it as omega z. And it's a vector, so I'll draw an arrow. This is theta dot times k, where k is a unit vector along z-axis. Okay, so that's in that's the angular velocity in 2D. Uh, in 2D, we also can write the linear velocity as omega z crossed with the position vector r. So this is, p is linear velocity, r is the position vector. Okay. It turns out that this also can be written as the same as the Jacobian of Q times Q dot. Okay. Uh, it just turns out that's another way to write it. And we've seen J times Q dot. Okay, but that's same as V omega cross R. Now, what exactly is V equals omega cross R. So this is going to be a review of um, vector algebra. And really we'll not use vectors eventually. We'll start using matrices. I'll show you there's a connection between omega cross R and a matrix, which will be obvious in just a bit. So let's write omega as omega X, unit vector along I, omega Y, times unit vector along j, omega z unit vector along k, crossed with rx i plus ryj plus rz k. Okay, and the way you take this cross product, if you remember, you basically write i, j, k, unit vectors. You write the first vector, omega x, omega y, omega z, and then you write rx, ry, Rz and those two vertical lines indicate that is the determinant of that quantity. So to find the or to compute the determinant, the way you do it is uh, you can expand this along any of the rows or columns. It's usually done along row one. Okay, so this is how you write it. You take i and then you compute the determinant of this part, right? If you want, you can write it like this, omega y, omega z, r y, r z. Then you take the negative sign, for the next one, minus j. And this is basically the rule. I'm just trying to go by the rule. Then you, then you compute the determinant form by uh, everything other than the row and column containing j. So j is in row one and column two. So we take everything which is outside that. So omega x, omega z. 
omega sorry rx rz and then find the plus k So eliminate everything in row one because k is in row one and column three and you're left with omega x, omega y, rx, ry. Okay, and now we compute the determinant. It's going to be, okay, just to omega y times omega rz. minus omega z r y. So that's the rule to compute a two by two determinant. Okay, I'll write this on a new line, minus j. So again, omega x times r z. Minus omega z r x plus k omega x r y minus omega y r X. Okay, sometimes you you might just write this as a vector. So instead of writing it as i j k, which we've never really used in this course, we can just write it as a it's it's clearly a vector, right? Containing i j and k. So we can just write it as three rows. Um, in a column vector. So the first row would be omega y r z minus omega z r y. I'm just going to factor in the minus. So omega z r x minus omega x r z omega x r y minus omega y Okay, so that's just sort of a review of uh, how to compute cross product and how to compute in particular velocity, the linear velocity. Let me introduce a new matrix, uh, which will help us to do a lot of these calculations with matrices. So a skew symmetric matrix. Let's denote it with the symbol S. So if there's a, a vector A as AXI plus AYJ plus AZK, or if you like, you could also write it as X, AY, AZ. That's just showing the X, Y, Z components of the vector. Then this is the definition. So the definition of a skew symmetric matrix is that S of A is this particular three by three matrix. A Y, so A Z, A Y, A Z, zero, minus A X, A minus A Y, ax zero. Okay, so it it uh, you can see that it's, it's like an uh, okay. So about this diagonal, you can see it's sort of like a mirror image with a negative sign. So row one column, row one column two, so row one column yeah row one column two is negative of row two column one. Row one column three is negative row three column one, and row two column three is negative of row three column one. Okay, that's how a skew symmetric matrix is defined. Uh, this particular relation uh, about the diagonal can best be captured by this expression. If you take S of A and you add to it S transpose of A, so take this matrix, transpose it in the sum it up, then you'll actually end up getting zeros. Everything will be zero. So it's per zero, three by three matrix of zeros.
Now there are two properties of skew symmetric matrix. The first one is actually kind of interesting. If you have A cross B, okay, that is if you have a cross product of one mate, one vector A crossed with another one, you can actually write this as S of A times B. Okay, so this is interesting because on the left side you have cross product and on the right side you have a uh, uh, matrix times a vector. Okay, so we will prove this. Okay, I'll, I'll show it to you how this works. Uh, the other property which we'll use a little bit later, and I'm not trying going to try to prove this, is if you have a rotation matrix R, if you multiply it with S of A, and then take the transpose, uh, but multiply with R transpose, then this is the same as S of R of A. And one way of proving this is to assume a rotation matrix. A rotation matrix is a property that R R transpose is I. Uh, you can actually show it for a specific case. So this is this R is the rotation matrix. So I said, we will prove this. We will not prove this one, but uh, it can be shown for a specific rotation matrix. You can take any A you want. You take a rotation matrix, it can be Rx, can be Ry, can be Rz, can also be Rx times Ry, multiply it, and you'll see that uh, left-hand side equals right-hand side. So let's show the this one because I think this is very interesting. How can a cross product be represented by a matrix times a vector? Okay, so let's show that. And I'll show this for a specific value for A and B. I'll just use um, A to be omega, okay, and B to be R, but I just have a very generic form for A for omega and R. So let's prove that. Let's say A is omega and B is R, then we need to show that omega cross R is S of A, so S of omega times R. Okay, so it turns out that omega cross R is something we've already computed. So if you go back to uh, the previous page, we already have computed omega cross R. This is, this is what we've already computed. So I don't really need to uh, do that computation. So if we just put that here. So that's done for you. Let's see if we can um, evaluate S omega times R and ensure that it's, it's equal to omega cross R. So I'm going to use the property of a skew symmetric matrix. Uh, so it's zero minus omega Z omega Y omega Z with the positive sign zero minus omega X. So here we'll have a mirror image of omega Y with a negative sign. Here we'll have omega X. And then we'll, here we'll have zero. Okay, and then we have Rx, Ry, Rz. Okay, so let's carry out this multiplication. So we have omega z, so zero with Rx, zero omega z times Ry plus omega y times Rz. Next, I need to multiply omega z with Rx minus omega x with rz. Finally, omega y with rx, so minus omega y rx, omega x with ry. Okay. okay now, 
we just need to check compare one and two. Okay. Do they look alike? Do they look the same expressions? Uh, there's omega y r z same as this. This one is the same as this one. And look at the omega z r x, omega z r x, omega x r z here, and then finally omega x r y, omega x r y, omega y the negative sign. Yeah. So one and two are the same, which shows that this proves that so one equal to two, which means that a v cross r oh sorry omega cross r is s of omega times r and it's generally true for any uh, omega and any r omega is okay my hunch is that if if uh, phi is the rotation about the x-axis and theta is the rotation about the y-axis and psi is the rotation about the z-axis, then is omega equal to phi dot i plus theta dot j plus psi dot k, right? Because it looks very similar to this. This is what it is in 2D. Now, it turns out that uh, this is not true. So this does not hold in 3D. And this is because rotations are not commutative. That is Rx cross times Ry is not Ry times Rx. Okay, so then the question is, how can we derive an expression for omega? So we our goal here is, is derive an expression for omega in 3D. Uh, this should be a function of Euler angles. So that would be phi theta psi and angular rate phi dot theta dot psi dot. Okay, so that's our next goal. That's basically the main part of this uh, this particular section. Okay, so we see that it's it's possible to get that, but it's there's a little bit of derivation involved. Okay, so what we did was uh, we know that R transpose R is I. No matter what the rotation matrix is, you can always show that R transpose times R or R R transpose is I. So what we can do is we can differentiate with respect to time. So carrying out this differentiation, we have to use the chain rule. There are two R's, so keep the second R constant, take the derivative of the first one, then do R, R dot, well, R transpose R dot equals the derivative of I, which is identity is zero. Okay, now I'm gonna do some uh, manipulation here and pay attention. So R transpose R dot, I can write it like this, transpose of transpose, okay? When I take a transpose and then the subsequent transpose, it's basically the same uh, matrix. So A transpose of transpose is A. So I'm just using that. Now what I do is, I use this transpose, the, the outer transpose, I mean the inner transpose uh, on this, Term. So that will give me R dot transpose R. Why is this true? It's because 
I use the fact, and this is something which you probably proved in uh, through examples in your first homework, if you remember, if you have AB and you take the transpose, that's the same as B transpose, A transpose. So this is AB. Transpose this whole thing. What I've written here is essentially B transpose, A transpose. So B is R dot, so R dot transpose. A is R transpose. Uh, so R dot transpose, transpose will become the same term R. So let me rewrite this because it's all cluttered here. So this is can be re, just rewriting it again. So what you notice is that this is a vec this is a matrix this is a matrix right uh, and this is a matrix this matrix is the transpose of this matrix so you see that it actually has the a form very similar to skew symmetric form s of a plus s transpose of a is zero okay so that means that whatever I have in there is actually a skew symmetric matrix so this r transpose r R dot transpose R is actually a skew symmetric matrix. Just because of this expression, it comes from the derivation uh, using the identity for the rotation matrix. Skew symmetric. Okay, so with that, I'm going to use this, that this tells me that R dot transpose R is S of A. Now, I, I don't quite know what A is, and I'm going to you know, compute what A is eventually, but uh, this holds true. There is a vector A such that when you take the rotation matrix R dot transpose R, you get S of A. So let me write it down. R dot transpose R is S of A. Now, just to make it a little bit uh, better in terms of manipulation, I'm going to post multiply with R transpose. Post with R transpose. So I have R dot R R transpose. Ah. S of A, R transpose. So this is I, right? R dot transpose is S of A, R transpose. Okay, so I really didn't want to have the transpose. I actually should have turned out, I should have started off with not this expression. I should have actually started with this expression. Uh, this would have given me something without the transpose, but it would have given me a different expression, but we can still fix it. There's no, no, there's no reason to, well, I could just write R as, I substitute R as, R transpose as a new R, it's called R bar. It doesn't really matter, you take R, you take the transpose, it's still a rotation matrix. So I'm just going to substitute, replace R transpose as R. Uh, it can be, it is a different R, but really a, if you take the transpose of a rotation matrix, it really doesn't change anything. I just want to do that so that I don't end up with a transpose here. So this can be written as uh, R dot equals S of A R, okay? It won't change anything. Uh, modifying R transpose as 
as R. Okay, I, I could have got that same expression, this one, if I had started, as I said, with this expression instead of this one. Both of them hold true. Okay, so now we've got this. So there is some property followed by uh, the rotation uh, matrix. I have R dot. R dot is something probably related to the angular velocity, right? Angular velocity is uh, rate of change of something which re represents the position uh, the orientation. R gives me the orientation. And if you take the derivative, it's probably related to the angular velocity. That's basically the notion here. But I still don't have, I don't have, I still don't. have an expression for omega, right? I need, eventually I need omega. So I need to work on that. Meanwhile, there's something here which we don't know. In this expression, we don't know what is A. Okay, uh, A is some vector, we know that because uh, when we did this manipulation, it turned out that this was a skew symmetric matrix. So we need to figure out what A is, and it turns out that we will show that A is actually omega. Okay, so that's something which I'll show. Um, okay, so let's do that. Okay, now, from the last class, what came out was, uh, was it here? All the angles, not this one. Yes, so this came out. We had this expression, R in world frame is, capital R, rotation matrix, time R in the body frame. Okay, I'm going to use that. R in world frame is capital R times R in body frame. Position in world frame, position in body frame from picture 16. Okay, so where we were, we were trying to show that The A in the skew symmetric matrix is actually omega. Okay, so for that, what I'll do is I'll invoke an expression I wrote down earlier uh, in the previous lecture. The position vector in world frame is capital R times the position vector in body frame. So what I'll do is I'll differentiate both sides. So let me write it again. It with respect to time. So if R dot equals R dot times RP plus R times RB dot, it's just a chain rule. Now it turns out that the position of a point on the body, uh, which is moving with the body, doesn't change with time, this is zero. This is basically a point on the body which uh, is, and the body moves, this point basically doesn't really change its, its length because it's fixed. So that factor is zero. So R dot is capital R dot times RB. But we also have R dot equals 
s of a times r. So where did this come from? This came from this expression. Let's call that one from one, right? So we can write r dot equals capital R dot is s of a times r times rb. So I just substituted for r dot. Okay. So r dot is s of a. Okay, but what is r times rb? r times rb is nothing but r, right? That's what I started with. Let's call that two. From two. Okay, but we know something about the skew symmetric matrix. We know that A cross B is same as S of A times B, which means that R dot is A cross R. So I just write a vector instead of. Uh, uh, vector instead of just everything up to here was a matrix, but when I drop that and write a vector, I need to write every everything as a vector. Okay, so what we found is R dot is A cross R. This comes from this expression and this identity which we showed earlier. But there's something we know, but we know that the linear velocity, which is nothing but r dot, is omega cross r. Okay, now if you put this together, that is a cross r, r dot is a cross r, r dot is omega cross r, we see that. So from, let's call this three, call this four. So from, three and four a equals omega. So this proves it that that skew symmetric matrix is actually omega. And now we can go back and uh, we wrote down r dot is s of a r. We can write it as r dot is s of omega times r. where s of omega is zero minus omega z omega y omega z zero minus omega x minus omega y omega x zero. Yeah, but that still doesn't answer the question, which is uh, we found what omega is in terms of capital R or rate of change of uh, the rotation matrix, but we still have not figured out how capital R or omega is related to the rate of change of Euler angles, phi, theta, and psi. So that's the next step. So how? Or omega x, omega y, omega z, related to p dot, theta dot, psi dot. Okay, so for that, what we have to do is, do I have enough time? 
Yeah, maybe I just have enough time. So we know that S of omega is R dot R transpose. And we chose three to one, which means that R is R Z R Y R X. Well, if you want, it's R Z about uh, so it'll be psi, R Y would be R Y theta, R X will be R X V. Okay, so let's carry this out. R, so I'm going to substitute for R, this is R Z, R Y, R X, the whole thing dot R transpose. So R transpose is clearly R Z, R Y, R X transpose. So I'm, I'm just uh, going to basically remove that transpose from the equation. So this is using A, B transpose is B transpose, A transpose. You could apply that for something like A, B, C. You just have to reverse the order. So for that, we have R, X transpose, R, Y transpose, R, Z transpose. This is as this is because A, B, C, the whole transpose is the same as C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. Okay, so now we need to basically take the first expression and do uh, use the chain rule. So we do first take the derivative of R, Z. R y R x plus keep R z constant R y dot R x plus R z R y and then take the derivative of the last term. R transpose x R transpose y R transpose z. Okay, let's call this one. Let's call this two. Let's call this two. Let's call this three. Formula for S of omega. Okay, there are three parts to it. Uh, one, well, this whole thing is in a bracket, by the way. And you need to multiply it with this term. And so what we'll do today is uh, we'll continue on this. Hopefully we'll finish up with angular velocity. I'm going to uh, expand this out, do one term at a time. So let's start with the red one. So the first term is R z dot R y R x, but then there is R x R y R z outside the bracket. So we need to take that into consideration. Okay, now we can do some manipulation here. Uh, we notice that Rx times Rx, uh, Rx transpose is identity. So this will become Rz dot Ry, Ry transpose, Rz transpose. But you notice again that Ry times Ry transpose is identity. So this gives me Rz dot transpose Rz, sorry, Rz dot Rz transpose. Okay, but we know something about uh, Rz dot Rz transpose. Okay. What we've figured out so far is, we see here, S of omega is R Z, where R dot R transpose, but if this was R Z, then we'll simply put omega Z, but omega Z is nothing but
What's omega z? It's the angular rotation about the z axis is psi. So omega z is psi dot unit vector along k. So what this gives me is s psi dot k. Okay, so that takes care of the first term. Let's simplify the second one. R y dot R x. And then what was out of the bracket was the common term was R x transpose R y transpose R z transpose. Okay, so again, we notice that we can actually take these two terms R x R x transpose that side into matrix. So we're left with Rz, Ry dot, Ry transpose, Rz transpose. Okay, but we know something about S omega, it's R dot, R transpose. So for Y, when we have Y here, this will simply be S of uh, omega Y. But S of omega Y is uh, it's theta dot theta dot uh, J, right? It's rotation about the Y axis, but theta is the Euler angle. So rate of change of Euler angle is theta dot. So what we can do is we can substitute this so to carry forward this equals rz s of theta dot j times rz transpose but there was an identity which i wrote down which is i think it was somewhere here there were two uh, identities of a skew symmetric matrix. Where I put it? it should be here, first page. Yeah, this is the property. So here's one property, which is R S R transpose is R, S of R of A. So I'm going to use that. But R S of A. R transpose is S of R of A. So we'll use this to simplify this as S of R Z. Uh, so R Z is R here, and then this thing is A, so theta dot J. Okay, so that's my uh, simplified expression. This is my simplified expression. There was a similar one for, this was the expression for uh, the first term. And then the third one, I'm just going to rewrite the third term now and simplify it. Third one is Rz, Ry. Rx dot transpose Rx, sorry, Rx dot Rx transpose R Y transpose R Z transpose. Now again, I can use the fact that this is S of uh, Omega, but Omega X. So R Z R 
r by s of omega x r by transpose or z transpose okay but what is omega x it's r y omega x is phi is the euler angle associated with rotation about the x axis and then the rate of change of that It's going to play with this R Z R Y S of phi dot I. I'm going to rewrite this last term as R Z R Y transpose. Uh, this is using the fact that uh, A B transpose is B transpose times A transpose. A B transpose is B transpose A transpose. That's typical. That's what I used. And then what we can do is uh, we again use this identity R S R transpose S of R of A. Here this is R, and this is R. So this is S of R Z R Y phi dot I. That's about it. So this is my simplification for the third term. Okay, now I'm going to put, get all these terms together. We just have three terms. Uh, the two return here and the one return on the previous page. So we can write take a new page. See, so this is the third one. This was our second first one. So this was Trying to get a formula for S of omega. Let me call this I. And uh, I'm going to put one, two, and three together. So from one now, S of omega, which was my left hand right left hand side, is equal to those three terms. Those three terms are. First one was psi dot k. Second one was rz theta dot j. And third one was rz ry phi dot i. Okay. Now, when we have the sum of uh, different skew symmetric matrices, you can actually add them up um, separately. If you, you can, this is easy to see. If you actually write this down to the matrix, each of these are three by three matrix, and you can just sum three matrices. Um, just take the sum of the elements, right? So this can also be written as S of psi dot k plus R z theta dot j plus R Z R Y P dot I. Okay, so now we have the answer to the question: What is angular velocity in three dimensions? It is psi dot k plus R Z theta dot j plus R Z R Y P dot I. Okay. Now there is a catch here, though. This is this is for three to one uh, rotations. 
So three to one is first you rotate about the, uh, the Z axis by an angle psi, then you rotate by theta about J and then phi about I. Okay, and this is only for this particular sequence of rotations. If you decide to change the sequence, so example, one, two, three, Bryant angles is a, is a different sequence. This formula will change. Okay, so remember that it's not universally true that this is true. So this is the 3D angular velocity for three to one rotation. You know, what I've shown you is probably, uh, it leaves, seems quite tedious to derive this expression the way I did it, right? So I started off with S of omega is R dot R transpose. And I gave, I essentially split R as based on the three to one convention, simplified and got the answer. It turns out there's an intuitive way of deriving the same expression, uh, which uh, you might want to do instead of trying to do this rigorous, Mathematics. So I'm going to show you an intuitive way of getting the same formula uh, just by reasoning with uh, with uh, diagrams showing how this three to one convention works. We've seen that diagram before. It'll become clear once I show it. So here's an intuitive way. Intuitive method to derive omega. Okay, this will be based on the uh, the figure I drawn some time back. So what exactly is going on with three to one is the following. First, we rotate about. So let's say that this is x, y, z. So first thing we did was rotate about the z axis. So that. that led to a different x. So let me put x prime, y prime, and z is unchanged. So this rotation is of course, uh, by an angle of psi. Then the next step was, let me redraw the current configuration x, y, z. Next was to rotate about the y-axis. Okay, so when I rotate about the y-axis, the y-axis or y prime will remain unchanged and I would have a new z. Let's call that z double prime because the second rotation and it's hard to show, but let's say like this, x double prime. This rotation was Theta and the final one where uh, it's about x axis, so the x would be unchanged. So let's just draw it in that this configuration y, x double prime, y prime. The double prime. So the third one was about the x-axis like this. So y will change and z will change. Y triple prime and z triple prime. So this would be phi. Here's a note, psi, about z, theta, theta about y prime, and phi about x double prime. Okay, so nothing new about here, just, uh, just this is how we proceeded to do uh, three, two, one. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to figure out the angular velocity. 
Okay, so angular velocity in the world frame, which is uh, in this frame, I, J, K. So it can, you can see that in order to do that, we first rotate about the Z axis. So it's psi dot Z. And I'll just write Z there to indicate that it is uh, this axis. Okay, and then we'll replace it with uh, the appropriate unit vector. It was followed by theta dot about y prime. And finally, phi dot about x double prime. Okay, yeah, so uh, you can compose it this way because uh, these rotations are about their respective uh, directions and these directions are basically changing. So y prime is so clearly not y. It's not, this y is different from this y prime. It's in a different in rotated configuration. But there's a way to compute a relation between uh, y prime and y. So we'll do that next. So psi dot, so this z is simply k. So nothing changes there. Then we have theta dot. Now y prime is related to y through a rotation matrix associated with psi. So that will be Rz psi, or you can call it just, we just used Rz for that times j. Okay, so this is basically y prime. To get to y prime, I needed to rotate about the z-axis. Uh, I need to rotate about the z-axis, but uh, but y in the new configuration would be uh, rz times y, in the words. If you want to compute y prime from y, that would simply be rz times y, just from from here, the relation will be because of Rz. Okay, then we have V dot. Okay, now we need to relate x double x uh, double prime with x. But in order to go from x double prime to x, we need to undergo two rotations. One is through Rz and one is through r theta, so r three r y. So x double prime is, first we have r z, then we have r y, then x. But x, yeah, so this is true. But that is same as r z, r y, x is i. So this thing is x double prime. Okay, so the answer is theta is psi dot k plus theta dot r z j plus p dot r z r y i. So here's the expression, which is exactly the same as what we derived earlier. So this omega, if you check, matches with the omega we found here. This was through the lengthy derivation. Okay, This is the same as this one. We got it a lot shorter steps just by arguing about the angles. Now, this is or one of the two things you need to know, what is the angular velocity in the world frame? Uh, world frame is in terms of uh, K, J, and I. Uh, you could, you could, you might need the angular velocity the other way, which is uh, compute the angular velocity in body frame. Okay. Uh, by body frame, I mean, uh, Instead of trying to relate with this frame, 
you might have to relate it with the final frame. So this would be this frame, the last one. So that we can do that same uh, reasoning using uh, similar arguments of doing a lengthy derivation. I'll show that to you. So this was one. Okay, this time we'll derive omega b, and this is in body frame. Okay, so if you think of this as x triple prime, okay, uh, if this vectors here are i prime hat or i i hat prime uh, j hat prime k hat prime so i hat prime j hat prime k hat prime r in body frame okay versus the world frame which is fixed this is the frame which the body has rotated in. That's the final configuration. We need to find omega in this frame. So for that, omega in body frame, instead of expressing everything in terms of i, j, and k, we need to express everything in terms of i hat prime, j hat prime, k hat prime, or everything in terms of x triple prime, y triple prime, and z triple prime. So what we'll do is we'll go in reverse. So we'll start with the first one. So we have p dot x triple prime, I've shown x triple prime, is the same as x double prime, plus theta dot y prime. Okay, let's just write it as y double prime, just, it's basically the same as triple prime, but let's write double prime, uh, plus psi dot, uh, here it will be, Z. Okay, just going the reverse direction. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to somehow express everything in terms of I, uh, I hat prime, J hat prime, K hat prime. So we can do it in the following way. P dot, so for P dot X double prime, X double prime is something but I hat prime. So nothing changes there. Then we have theta dot. Now, now we need to express y dot, but instead of going from left to right like this, we need to go from right to left. Okay, so now what will happen is we don't quite need this because this expression here is going to ex this expression related uh, from left to right. So I'm going to delete this and this. Okay, so what we know is, since we're interested in y, y prime, we know that this is y triple prime. We know that y prime is, sorry, r theta y prime is y double prime. So that is, if you want to compute y, Oh, y triple prime. If you want to compute y triple prime, you need to take the rotation matrix, which relates the two, which is r theta, and multiply it with. My bad. So, okay, uh, that's not true. You need feeds, not 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 theta. Right. So, if you take r phi and you multiply it with y prime, you get y triple prime. Okay, but we are interested in the other way, which is we want to eliminate y prime. So y prime will be, uh, you need to take the transpose of both sides. So if you take the transpose, you get r phi prime transpose y triple prime. Okay, why this is true is because uh, r phi transpose the same as r phi inverse. So you could take, you could multiply with this. Multiply, let me just do it this way, R phi transpose Y triple prime. 
right? This is basically identity. So that's why you get this, but this is nothing. But y prime is R P transpose. Y triple prime is nothing but uh, J hat prime. So we have R phi transpose J hat prime plus, so finally we need to go this way. So that would be relating uh, Z <coughs> over here with Z over here. I think I've switched this. So this will get switched. Z triple prime is K hat. K, you could write it this way. Or if you like, you could also write it as When I say R phi, it's basically Rx. Rx transpose, Rz transpose, K hat. these in matrix form, we, we have omega equals cosine psi, cosine theta, minus sine psi, zero, cosine theta, sine of psi, cosine psi, zero, minus sine theta zero one phi dot theta dot psi dot okay and then omega b which is the body frame one can be written as one zero 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 cosine phi minus sine phi, minus sine theta, cos theta, sine phi, cosine phi, cosine theta, sorry. Okay, now uh, this is just another way of writing the same expression down. You could write this as omega equals Some matrix A times I'll I'll use this capital omega. This is rate of change of Euler angles, or you could write omega B equals A times rate of change of Euler angles. Let's we call this B. Uh, these are Euler angle rate of change of Euler angles. So it's phi dot theta dot psi dot. Now sometimes you're given omega and omega B and you're told to evaluate what Euler angles is, right? So how, how you can use that, for example, if you want to relate omega with omega b, you can eliminate psi dot from the two expressions. For that, what you need to do is, you need to take the inverse of A. So A inverse omega. Now, if you look at the determinant of A, you see that it's equal to determinants of A, 
B equals cosine of phi. Okay. The determinant is has a cosine phi. So when you take the inverse, you have to take uh, one divided by cosine, right? So this calculation would involve taking one divided by determinant of A or determinant of AB, but so A inverse or AB inverse will have one divided by cosine of phi and clearly when phi so this is so these inverse is not defined or or they'll basically be blow up when phi equals 90 degrees okay so this, this has a singularity, okay? So what people do is, uh, so how do you fix this? This is always a problem with any Euler angles. Any Euler, any time you use Euler angles, there's a particular configuration. In this case, phi is 90 degrees, which leads to a singularity. That's a problem when you try to get the angular speed. So what people do is they avoid this, avoid singularity, so this is nothing to do with the physical system. The physical system is not singular. It's just that the mathematical representation gives you this issue. So to avoid singularity, people use what are known as quaternions, which we will not cover in this course. But you will hear quaternions, and that quaternions is to do with uh, 3D rotations. Okay, it's another way of representing 3D rotations, and you can get the angular velocity using uh, quaternions. 